So in last class, we talked about how functional groups, right? Functional groups can act as like some sort of extra Lego pieces that attach to our hydrocarbon chain in order to make different kinds of molecules. And we also mentioned that carbon molecules are really organic molecules. And today, in this particular lesson, we're going to learn how we can create biomolecules. So biomolecules is really just a subtype of organic molecules, biomolecules. So the definition of biomolecules is really just molecules that are present in life. So molecules that are present in living organisms. And the basic building blocks of all these biomolecules, the most common one at the very least, is carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. By using covalent bond to mix these four major types of elements, we can create the building blocks that are essential to build a living organism. There are four major biomolecules that we're going to learn. The first one is a very common one, which is carbohydrates, the sugar family. The second one is lipid, the fatty family. The third one is protein, the muscle family. And the last one is nucleic acid, which is your DNA. So each one of them is a major group. So this is like the major group of organizations for all the biomolecules that we're going to learn. The sugar family, the fat family, the protein muscle family, and our DNA nucleic acid family. So to build carbohydrates, lipid, protein, or nucleic acids, these are all biomolecules. It means that they are big molecules for living organisms. So you need some sort of basic building blocks. The elemental building blocks that we have are carbon, oxygen, and then nitrogen, and last but not least, phosphorus. By mixing them in different ratio, we can build a repeated unit, which we call monomer. So monomer is really just repeated units that we can use repeatedly in different ways of organization to build the big biomolecule. So monomers, the definition of, it of monomer is small, similar, repeated molecular units. So of course, they will have different ratio of functional groups as well because this every big molecules behave differently. So now I'm going to use this graphical representation to represent each monomer. Carbohydrates, we usually use this diamond shape to represent the monomers of uh, carbohydrates. Lipid, I'll be using a rectangular shape to represent the monomers of lipid. Protein, I'll use this shape, the Tetris box, to represent protein. And nucleic acid, I'll use this weird shape to represent nucleic acid. And so right now, all you need to know is that we have these building blocks, which we call monomer, and they can be attached together to form biomolecules. And each of these things has their own functional groups, which we have learned before, like those carboxyl group, carbonyl groups. We're just gonna take them and attach them at different corners to make different monomers. So if we attach monomers with monomers, we're going to produce something which we call polymer. So polymer is really just a big chain of monomer. So if I have one monomer and I attach it with another monomer and attach it with another monomer and attach it with another monomer, continuously, I will make a polymer. The attachment of this, of course, it is still covalent bond. So all of these are still covalent bond, but the formation of this bond, this covalent bond, needs to remove a water. 
So whenever a new covalence bond is formed between these two monomers, a water molecule will be released. This particular process, we call it dehydration synthesis. Or in, according to your book, it's called dehydration reaction. Or dehydration synthesis. Synthesis just means making. D means re removal. Hydration is water. So dehydration means removal of water. So the reverse is also true. So let's say if I have a polymer, basically a long chain of monomers, how do I break this bond? How do I break this covalent bond? All I need to do is take a water molecules, H2O, take a water molecules, attack it, and it will break. So I will be able to release one monomer out of the polymer. So this is a long polymer chain. So the covalent bond has been broken using water. To use water to break something, we call hydrolysis. Hydro means water, lysis means breaking down. So using water to break down a bond, we call this particular process hydrolysis. So to wrap it up, the detail of each structure will be learned in the next lesson. Have a good day.